All right, so you got your taste of the official uh, Redneck Amphibious Vehicle Dry Land Test. And we're going to be rewinding time a little bit on that uh, just to show you uh, what was involved with that process. It was kind of cool. Um, but now, as promised, um, the way I'm going to be releasing my videos is, um, you know, a fun video like hopefully the Redneck thing was kind of fun. And uh, we're going to be releasing those side by side in pairs with a how-to uh, video having to do with how to have a successful curb penning trip. So uh, now we're going to jump into um, a series of videos um, that I've uh, created for you um, to get you started on a successful trip. So here we go. Hey guys, um, so just wanted to give you a disclaimer on my disclaimer. Um, just wanted to let you know that uh, the very first how-to video is uh, pretty long um, but the reason for that is is that I wanted you to have everything in one video that you would need to actually start a trip so that's the reason it's um, fairly long so I just wanted to warn you that you might want to watch it in chunks or something um, but the other videos from here on out like um, showing the actual how to do the work and and that kind of thing they will be considerably shorter and uh, even the, um, you know, just like the fun road trip videos or the other stuff I got going on, those will be shorter too. So just wanted to let you know. Peace. All right. Hi, guys. Welcome to my first how-to video of different aspects of curb painting life in America on the road. Um, these first few videos are going to be like a checklist of things that you need. The first thing I'm going to show you is that um, if you want to like go on the road and um, live really cheaply and save all you can and make all you can, then you're going to need a van. Um, I'm going to show you the van that I got for our most recent trip to Wyoming and I love it. It's a little Dodge Caravan. It worked perfectly for everything that we needed uh, we were able to sleep comfortably in it um, pack all of our supplies it got good gas mileage uh, it was comfortable to drive um, you're welcome to get whatever you want and you can totally ignore this part if you're planning on staying in a motel but this is for the people who want to save as much money as possible also so let me show you my little van that I got. Here we go. It's just a, like a 2000, I think seven, like a 2007 Dodge Caravan. Pretty simple um, car, but I'll tell you the aspect that you really, 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 really want. Um, well, you, let me first of all show you how I uh, shaded out the windows that so you have privacy when you sleep in the back you can see they're all shaded out you can also see the fans that I have and you can also get what's called an icy breeze to keep it cool in here but the main thing I wanted to show you is that this has the seats that completely fold down into the floor of the van and that's just like a really cool thing like this seat right here will fold completely into the floor down here. Now you'll notice also that I have across the top, you see just a shower curtain here that goes across here. And then um, there's a shower curtain um, that's attached to it that you can put across the top. And, and that's so you'll have privacy when you're sleeping. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend these Dodge Caravans. They're just awesome for being on the road. Um, and get the kind that folds down into the floor, that all the seats in the back fold down into the floor because it makes everything so easy. And you can keep it that way the whole trip. But um, 
I got this van for $1,900, and it has been a great van. I've had just little tiny problems with it, nothing major at all, and I've driven it a lot. We drove it all the way to Wyoming and back and had no problems. So that's the first thing on your checklist um, if you want to make a trip, is getting the right kind of van uh, for your trip. You can totally ignore this if you're wanting to stay in motels, but remember that's going to be expensive and that's for the people who don't want to really save money. They're just kind of going on vacation, but this is for the people who really want to save. All right, peace out. We'll go on to the next how-to video. Hey guys, I'm back and I'm here with the next thing on your checklist of things that you will need for a successful curb painting trip. The very first thing on that list is to have your flyers complete before you go on the road. Um, you want to have them all made, copied, and cut uh, before you go on the road because flyers is one of those things that can be really difficult um, to have done on the road because sometimes there's a delay, um, sometimes you can't find somebody who will do it cheap enough or any number of things. So I wanted to let you know that you got to get all your flyers and more done uh, before you leave on your trip. So what I do is if I'm like for instance going on a two week trip, I get 5,000 flyers made and cut before I go. And here's what I do with them. So you can see my little handy dandy kit that I made. Um, it perfectly fits the flyers. They're all cut and they're stacked and they're ready to go. So I'll show you um, one of my individual flyers that I have and you can read through it. And you are more than welcome to copy it, uh, you can see that I've blanked out my name and phone number. That's where your name and phone number would go. But you're more than welcome to copy everything on this flyer. Now notice the one place where I put not connected to and or required by the city. Um, that's very important because um, you want to have that in writing on your flyers. So if people come back to you and say, well, you're making it look like you're connected with the city, you want to be able to point them back to the flyer that says, even your flyer says you're not connected with the city. Now, you want to be licensed with the city to solicit if you need that wherever you're going. Some cities require... Uh, a solicitor's permit other ones don't require anything but you do need to call ahead to the city or town where you're planning on going and let them know exactly what you're doing uh, so that you know all their soliciting laws and have that all known and taken care of before you go on the trip very important so We'll be talking more about the importance of flyers later as far as like getting them out first thing in the morning, 7 o'clock, sharp every morning while your legs are fresh, and things like that. But those will be in other videos to follow. But I just wanted to show you this is the first thing on your checklist. All right, guys, here's your uh, next thing on your checklist of supplies that you will need for your trip. Um... These supplies have come with uh, years of experience of learning what works best. Right now, I'm just going to show you what you need to get. There will be other videos that show you how to use this stuff, so you don't have to worry about that right now. Um, but this shows just um, the basics of what you need in your curb painting kit. So here we go. As you can see, uh, this is a well-used uh, plastic carry-all kit. 
You can get them at Home Depot. Um, you can see mine has paint all over it. Um, within the kit, uh, you will have your stencils. You can see that you have um, all the stencils. You have three of each number. And uh, the stencils are divided by a thin metal sheet that I use that's cut like this so you can easily access them. So each set of numbers uh, one through nine um, is separated off with those metal things so you can easily finger through them and access the stencils that you need. So you have your kit and your stencils. Then of course um, you want uh, some gloves to cover your hands so they don't get paint all over them. I recommend this type. Uh, you can get them at Home Depot. They're a little paint covered. But they're just that kind that are dipped in rubber. Uh, and then of course you have a rag. Um, now right here is a standard car mat that you get at um, AutoZone, Auto Supply, and what it will become is you will cut it into strips like these. These strips are 5 inches by 24 inches. You want them that long because you never know how long or wide the background that you're going to be painting will be. And that's what these are used for, is for the background that you'll be putting on the curb. And you'll be getting more information on how to use those later also. I just wanted to show you that you need those along with another thing that's cut out of the same car mat. Um, uh, to hold your numbers up. That's what this is. And then of course you'll have a, a steel brush that to clean the dirty curbs in case there's dirt and grime on the curb you're painting. Masking tape to hold your numbers together. And so you'll need uh, and of course uh, uh, black and white paint. Uh, this is a very good product by Rostolium. It's called an inverted marking paint. That's what I use for the white background. It, uh, it works really good. Um, like I said, it's by Rust-Oleum and it's called an inverted marking paint and it paints it very quickly. Um, and then this is also a product by Rust-Oleum that I use for the black numbers. And you'll see all the techniques on how to use those and everything later. But I just wanted to show you all the supplies for the actual curb painting that you would need beforehand. And you will need to get probably two sets of these um, car mats. And you need to get, they're the cheap kind, I forget who makes them, but they need to be the cheap kind and they need to be soft and pliable. You don't want them uh, brittle and crunchy or not very flexible. You want them very soft and pliable. So, and ironically, they're the ones that are the least expensive. So that's good news for you. So anyway, that's the second um, thing in your checklist for supplies is what you need in your curb painting kit. All right, the next thing I wanted to show you uh, as far as supplies that you'll need is just kind of miscellaneous supplies that you'll need um, as far as like tape for your flyers, tape for um, attaching your numbers together, and just kind of miscellaneous supplies. So here is the kit. It's just a, one of those standard plastic kits that I got for containing all this. Um, it contains the envelopes um, along with, you can see, stamps and the things that we put on the envelopes, which I'll show you later. Um, it includes, you know, things like scissors, scotch tape, uh, scotch tape refills, and extra rags. Um, 
And then in these envelope draw, um, containers, uh, I have prepared these right here. You can see this is what we actually leave on customer's door. It basically has a sheet, you know, thanking them for their business. And then it says, uh, you know, to please use the self-addressed envelope to mail the payment. And then who the checks are made out to. So I keep a whole supply of those. It's uh, good to have more than more of those than what you need. Because um, those are the things... Um, those are the things that you'll leave on people's doors and that's how you get paid. So that's real important to have plenty of those made. And I'll also be covering later about what you do with people who, like say after two weeks um, of you coming home, have still not paid. Um, I have a way of collecting from them also, which I'll share with you, but just not in this video. So all I wanted to show here was just your basic supplies um, that you need to get started on a trip. And like I said, make sure you pre-make plenty of uh, envelopes like this here that you'll be leaving on people's doors that have the little tag that tells them you, you were here and also who to make the check out to, etc. And it also is a self-addressed envelope that has your address on it because that's how you get uh, the mailbox money uh, when you come back home from the people who were not home when you painted their address numbers on the curb. That's one of the cool things about these trips is you get a bunch of mailbox money uh, on your return. So that's it for your basic supplies. All right. So now you have all of your supplies you need. You have transportation. So now you might be asking yourself, well, how do I actually start? Okay, good question. Um, what you need to do is you need to decide where do you want to go. Now, obviously, you cannot go anywhere north or where it's cold in the wintertime. You have to stay south um, during the wintertime. But uh, during nice weather months, you can go north, south, east, west, wherever you want. So what you do is you just pick like a general location where you want to go. Now, if you go to a bigger city, um, you will get response, but your response is not going to be as good as if you go to the kind of city that I tell you to. Um, because in the big cities, there's lots of other people doing it, so your response is not going to be um, as good as if you go to a smaller town. So what I would do is I would go to the general area where you want to go, and then pick a town that has like maybe 50,000 people to 90,000 people. That's generally like the perfect size that you want. So one thing you want to do is you want to call ahead to whatever city or town that you've chosen. You want to make sure you call ahead um, and tell them exactly what you're doing, that, that you're going to be putting flyers on people's doors and people fill it out if they want to have it done and then they put it back out on their door and, and just let them know exactly what you're going to be doing because, trust me, cities... And city governments are really picky, and so you need to be exactly up front with what you're doing. But tell them what you're doing, and then ask them, do I need any kind of permit for that, uh, to be able to do that? The worst case scenario is that they say that we don't allow that at all. But that does not very often happen. What they'll usually say is that you need some kind of solicitor's permit that usually costs around $25 or so. And that's great. So you just, just ask them details of what you need to do, um, you know, in order to start. Um, so then after you've done that, um, you want to find a neighborhood within that town once you've got there. And what you're looking for is like a middle class neighborhood to a middle upper class. Usually the middle upper class neighborhoods are better um, 
But the one thing you want to be looking for, if there's any fresh numbers at all that have been done, do not cover that neighborhood because that means it's already been covered by somebody else. You're not going to get a very good uh, response. Um, so anyway, just uh, know, know where you're going and let me tell you one thing extremely important. Once you have decided on the neighborhood that you want to cover, um, you need to be there at 7 a.m. starting to pass out your first flyer because you want to do your flyers and that needs to be something that you discipline yourself to do to be starting at 7 a.m. or even a little before um, and you want to pass out like about at least three hours of flyers every day starting on a Monday and you want to make your travel day to where you're going on a Sunday so you can start fresh on a Monday because Monday might be a little bit slow because you might end up having to you know get the permit and stuff so you might get a little bit of a late start only on Monday but generally it's very important to start your flyers early and do at least three hours worth um, to get the kind of response that you want to get um, so and plus your legs are fresh in the morning and then that gives them a whole day to respond to the flyers so very important to get started early and do at least three hours um, with your flyers so yeah like I just said you want to start um, as early as possible with your flyers and do at least three hours every day now Monday will be a little bit different especially if you're uh, you have to take time to do your permits first um, but Monday uh, you do your three hours worth and usually on Monday I try to do like maybe at least one hour extra of flyers because on Mondays that's all you're doing is flyers so after you do your flyers you're basically done for Monday um, unless you've already been there for a week and you have maybe some people who have been calling back and wanting their numbers done you can use that afternoon to kind of get caught up on people who forgot to put their flyers out so generally uh, Monday uh, you do a little bit extra and um, what you want to do is once you've found your neighborhood, uh, you want to decide uh, where to uh, sleep, whether you're going to do the van thing and sleep in the van or the motel thing. Um, the van thing, if you do that, the best place I've found to sleep is a motel parking lot. Um, and I kind of do a don't ask, don't tell because some motel parking lots are fine uh, with you staying there and some are not. So you can do that if you want, where you kind of just duck in the back of the van. Um, and another option is, is most Walmart parking lots are okay with you sleeping over there um, in the parking lot, in certain designated areas um, of their parking lots. So you can stay at most Walmarts also. So those are two options that you have as far as sleeping over. Now, uh, in a video that is to come, uh, I can show you how you can actually even shower in your van. Um, but, and it works, but it's not real convenient. It does get you clean, but um, one of the better bets is to just maybe find a, a, a truck stop. They usually charge you like maybe about $5 to use a shower. So you can do that. That's what I've done and it's worked real well in the past. But you want to um, make all those arrangements uh, ahead of time before, you know, the night before you're going to start passing out flyers. So you can just um, get right on it um, the next morning and, like I said, be passing out your first flyer by 7 a.m. So what your, your week will basically look like is on Monday you will be doing nothing but passing out flyers. That's all. If you're just getting there, you may have to go and go to the city office and get your permit first before you start doing flyers. But on Monday, that's basically all you're doing. So, like I said, I recommend doing four hours instead of three on Mondays just to get a few extra uh, flyers in. Then the rest of the afternoon and evening is yours to do what you would like on Monday. Um, and then Tuesday through Friday... Uh, 
your day is basically going to be, you know, starting to, you need to decide where you want to do your flyers um, the night before. It's very important to know where you want to go the night before so you can go right to your starting point first thing in the morning so you don't have to waste time. So like Tuesday through Friday, you will be uh, starting passing out your flyers um, like from 7 to 10 a.m. And then you'll take a short break and then you'll come back to the neighborhood that you passed out flyers at before and, and you'll look and see which ones are filled out and you'll paint the ones that are filled out and like I said before about half the people you do it for are home and you collect right then and if you if you um, collect the money from them right then I recommend just getting rid of the little thing that they uh, filled out for you so you don't get it confused with people who have not paid but you want to make sure you keep record of the people who have not paid because the other video shows you what to do um, with those folks. So anyway, that's going to be your procedure. On You start off by doing your flyers and then um, on Tuesday you'll do flyers in the morning again but then you'll come back to the neighborhood you were uh, that you had covered before with flyers and you'll go and you'll see which ones are filled out. You'll do the work and you'll leave envelopes where people are not home, that kind of thing. So you'll do that Tuesday through Friday. And then if you choose to work on Saturdays, which I usually do, that means you'll be passing out flyers on Friday morning. Um, and then on Saturday, all you'll be doing is painting. And then you'll have, and that only takes like, you know, two to three hours. So then you'll have the rest of your Saturday and Sunday uh, to do what you want. And you'll also have your evenings to do wh whatever you want. Um, and this type of arrangement is for people who really want to you know, make some money. If you're just trying to pay for your trip, um, you can probably do a little bit less than what I'm suggesting here. Um, but that's the information. That's going to be your basic procedure of uh, choosing towns, choosing neighborhoods, where to go, making sure you get your permits. Um, but the, the one thing, like I said, the hard, one of the hardest things to do is to make sure you discipline yourself to start passing out flyers by 7 a.m. and know where you're gonna go the night before to start passing out flyers. Otherwise, you start wasting a lot of time and especially if you're getting good response, you won't have a lot of time to waste. So anyway, that's about all the information you need uh, to at least get started. We're going to have several other videos that are going to help you along the way. And then also just entertaining videos that we've had from on the road. And also some things that are going on um, in my life right now that I think you'll find uh, hopefully entertaining. Um, so anyway... Uh, I hope you all have great trips and we'll have a way that we can communicate with you uh, of people that want to take trips and I might even be able to take somebody um, on a trip and uh, figure out a way of doing that. So uh, happy curb painting and good luck. Hey there, I just wanted to give you some extra very important information regarding the flyers. Um, that I just showed you a video about and also the self-addressed envelopes that you will leave on people's doors if they are not home uh, when you do the work. Uh, the flyers are designed, um, you put them on people's doors and I would advise uh, do not put them on any doors that have like a no soliciting or no trespassing or any sign like that. Just trust me on that, don't do that. So you put these flyers on people's doors and the way it's designed is it tells them if they want it done, put it back out on the door by the next morning and have it filled out. And that's how when you drive by the next morning, you'll know um, which ones, you'll look for flyers that are filled out and whatever ones are filled out, you'll do it. But what I wanted to show you is this. Now you'll see the flyer that I showed you and you remember you can uh, read and copy this you're welcome to completely copy it like where my name and uh, you know where it says where the checks are made out to 
um, and my name is scratched out, you could put your name and phone number in there. Um, but what I wanted you to focus on is the bottom of the flyer. Um, I designed it like a mailing label on purpose. You'll notice it has the name, address, city, state, and zip code. Um, now I did that so that the uh, customer will, will fill it out and you have a ready-made mailing label because what happens is when you see when you drive by the next morning and if you see a filled out flyer then you go ahead and do the curb painting then you ring the doorbell and about half the people are home and you collect from them right then and and I would advise on those people just uh, getting rid of um, the flyer that they filled out because so you don't get it confused with people who have not paid. So you'll go by, if you see a flyer that's filled out, you do the work, um, and then um, if they're home, you just collect right then, but if not, you leave uh, a self-addressed envelope that looks like this, okay? I'll zoom out a little bit. You'll notice it's just a regular envelope, but I put a sheet of paper on there that basically says thank you for your participation excuse me your participation and it, and it says please use the self-addressed envelope um, for the convenient mailing of your $15 payment then who and it says who the checks are made out to and I also put my phone number on there and that's where yours would go in place and then you'll notice it also has um, uh, my name and address. Okay, I scratched it out and that would that's where yours would go um, So you ha this is what you leave on people's door if they are not home so ideally Everybody Who was not home when you painted would go ahead and mail the payment and most people do but you will have a few people who um, either lose the uh, self-addressed envelope that you gave them or or just misplaced it or something so here's what I do and it's very important uh, people who um, when you get back from your trip after like say a week or so you still have not received any payment um, then what I do is I take um, this letter that I've made um, you can see you know I have my address on it and then it just basically is saying, hey, you know, we were there and we painted your address numbers and we left a self-addressed envelope, but we still have not received payment from you. Um, I'm enclosing another self-addressed envelope. And could you please um, make your $15 payment to my name and then the address on the other self-addressed envelope? So you'll notice that I have this and it's, uh, it's kind of it's kind of folded. It's tri-folded like that and what you do is you put another self-addressed envelope that you Tri-fold like this see how it's tri-fold so you put it inside there and you fold it up and then you take That envelope and you put it inside another envelope, or excuse me, you put that letter with the uh, self-addressed envelope, a new self-addressed envelope, you put it in there with the letter explaining that you have not got payment yet. And then what you will have is, you know, your return address and a stamp. And then remember the bottom of the uh form that they filled out is designed like a mailing label so what you'll do with the bottom of that is you'll tear it off and I use just like clear packing tape and uh, I tape it I tape it onto this new uh, you know envelope that I just made that has the letter and also the the new self address envelope and and so it has the the new cut on the front of this it has the customer's uh, name address city state and zip and then I mail those out to the customers 
who I have not received payment from. And, and after you do that, you have um, maybe just like 1% of all the people that you paint numbers for that don't pay. And trust me, if you're making good money with this, 1% is not a big deal. But I wanted to show you this video because it's very important um, you know, that you know uh, what to do when a customer is not home um, after you paint. And actually, we'll have other videos that will sh that will kind of remind you of that um, when we're doing it actual on actual trips. So, uh, just wanted to let you know these important things um, about this about how you can collect uh, your payments. All right, peace out.